Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. All right, so we are looking at uh, that revision in physics. We are done with maths, all right? So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. All right, so let's quickly have a look at this question. Um, I took it from the Eastern Cape prelim exam, right? So uh, let's dive into it. They say to us, we've got a group of learners that set up an experiment to determine the height of their school. They release a tennis ball from point A to the edge, at the edge rather, of the roof of the school building, as shown in the diagram. Now they say to us point B is two meters above the ground and the wall and the ball rather takes 0 0.125 seconds to cover the distance from point B to, uh, to the ground, which is point C. All right, now we're given information about different parts of the journey of the ball. But the first thing that I want you to please note is that they have given us this word right here. They said to us, the ball is released, right? Now, remember, whenever we use this word released, it suggests to us that we've got an initial velocity. Now, because the building is stationary, right? It means that our initial velocity in this case should be equal to zero. Right. Now, let's quickly have a look at it. So, which means the initial velocity of the ball should be zero, right? Of course, it will fall to the ground. Now, the first question they ask us, oh, well, they did say ignore the effects of air friction, which is important, right? Right. They say write down the magnitude of the rate of change of velocity, now, remember, what is the rate of change of velocity? That is acceleration, right? So they want the magnitude of the acceleration. This ball is accelerating due to gravity, right? So in this case, it will be 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course, uh, they just set the magnitude, so we don't need to specify the direction. But if they said to us, write down the rate, okay, of the change of velocity, then we'd need to specify and say this is downwards, okay, right. But they didn't in this question, so we move right along. Now they say to us, calculate the height h, right, of the school building, right. Now what we need to keep in mind, ladies and gents, is that We've got different pieces of information, right? But in this case, um, we do not have consistent information in relation to, you know, the, the motion of the ball, right? Now, in this case, if you look at, let's say, from A to B, right? What would we know in that case? It, we would know what the initial velocity of the ball is. It is zero, right? But you agree with me? Right, where well, of course, we'd know the acceleration, which is 9.8. Okay, I'm going to assume that we are taking downwards as positive. Right, so in this case, it simply means that uh, between A and B, there isn't really sufficient information. Because remember, if you take the time there, 0 0.125, that's the time that it takes from B to C. So I'm going to take different segments of this motion. Right, and I'm going to find out what is the velocity at B. Right now, think about it. What do we have at B? We're looking for the initial velocity there, right between B and C. We've got the vertical height, right? So we've got the displacement, uh, we've got um, the acceleration in that case, right? And of course, uh, in this case, we can have a look at what that gives to us, right? So I'm going to say, right, for 3.3, 3.2.1, uh, 3 right, I'm looking at B to C. I'm looking for the initial velocity there, and I'll tell you why I'm doing that, right? So I'm looking for the velocity at B, which is unknown. The final velocity uh, is also unknown to us, okay? And gravitational acceleration, this would be 9.8, positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, please remember, it's positive because it is uh, uh, downwards, 
right? And we've chosen down as positive, right? So what about the time that it takes? We've got 0 0.125, okay? And what do we also have? We've got the displacement, right? That's in seconds rather. And the displacement in that case would be two meters, right? So we are looking for final velocity, I mean, initial velocity, right? So whatever equation of motion we take must be an equation with initial velocity. All of them do, right? But we are not given final velocity. So which is the only equation without final velocity? It's delta y. That's vi delta t plus 1 over 2 a delta t squared. Right, so what do we have for our displacement? That's 2. We want the initial velocity. This is 0 0.125, okay, plus a half times positive 9.8 times 0 0.125 squared. All right, now let's quickly have a look at it. So I'm going to take that entire product and I'm going to subtract it, take it to the other side, and I'm going to subtract that from 2, right? So I'm going to say, right, we've got 2 minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 0 0.125 squared, okay? So I get that to be 1.923. Right, so you've got 1.923 dot dot dot, and this is equal to vi times 0 0.125. So what I'm going to simply do is divide both sides by 0 0.125. Okay, so there it is there, right? Uh, that cancels out. I'm going to take that and divide all of it by 0 0.125 and I get a velocity of 15.39 okay so which means the velocity at B okay we said uh, let's check 15.39 okay so that's 15.39 that's meters per second now, remember, this is the velocity at point B, right? Now, I want you to note, what does that now give us? Which means we can now use information between A and B. I've got the velocity here. We found it to be 15.39, okay? Now, I want the height between A and B, right? Uh, in this case, so that I can add it to that 2 meters so that we get the total height of the uh, um, of the building right so what i'm going to do between a and b i've got initial and i've got final velocity right and i've got gravitational acceleration so i can actually look for the height what we don't have there is time right so which equation would be without time so that would be vf squared that's vi squared now remember this is a to b right plus two times a delta y. Right, our final velocity, this is the velocity at B, 15.39 squared. Our initial velocity was 0 plus 2 times 9.8 and times delta y. So 2 times 9.8, that's 19.6 rather, and 19.6 delta y which is equal to 15.39 all squared. Right, so I'm going to divide both sides by 19.6. Right, so divided by 19.6. Right, so let's quickly have a look at it. So this would give me 15.39 squared divided by 19.6 and I get a height, delta y is 12.08. Uh, so the, this means that delta y is 12.08 meters, okay? But remember, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the height, right? So the height will be the displacement of the ball from A to B plus the further displacement between B to C. 
So that would mean it is 12.08 plus 2, and so that would give me 14.08 meters. Okay, so that's the height of the building. All right, I hope that made sense. Right, so let's go on to the next one. So they say to us, um, calculate uh, the time that it takes for the ball to reach the ground. Okay, now please have a look at it. Now we, are, uh, we do have the time that it takes from B to C. So all we need to find is the time that it takes from A to B, right? So um, that's going to be our 3.2.2. Okay, so we're going to say right. So remember between A to B, still, right? We know what the initial velocity is, the final velocity. We know gravitational acceleration, and we're looking for the time. So VI, VF is VI, and I use the first equation times G delta T. Now, of course, if you still don't uh, necessarily understand how I choose equations, please go and have a look at the video that I made of the full lesson on vertical projectile motion, right? So our final velocity, remember, at B, we found that to be 15.39. Um, so that's 15.39. Our initial velocity, which was 0, that would give us 9.8 times the time that it takes, right? So we've got divide both sides by 9.8. And so what you get there in terms of time, okay, we have, uh, we've got 15.39, and we divide that by 9.8. Okay, right, I get a time of 1.57 seconds, but remember that's only from A to B, so which means we're going to add the 0 0.125 so the total time will be the time, okay, let me write it down, time from A to B plus the time from B to C. So that would be 1.57 plus 0 0.125, okay? And so that gives us 0 0.6, nine five okay so that's one point six nine five so that would be well we can approximate it to actually uh two right okay so we're going to say one point five seven plus zero point one two five okay uh let's make it one point seven seconds okay right so which means the total time of flight would be around about 1.7 seconds. All right, I hope that we are good, ladies and gents. Right, we're done with 1.2.2. Okay, of course, nothing wrong if you decided uh, to take the entire motion of the uh, ball from A to C, right? So uh, you would still perhaps get to the same time. Um, uh, you can do that and actually find out. Now they say to us, um, calculate the velocity with which the ball strikes the ground. Okay, so meaning we would be now looking for the velocity at C. Okay, so without any waste of time there, right, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take, okay, so my motion, um, so what number is that? We are looking at 3.2.3. Okay, so I'm going to take my motion, the velocity from B to C, right? So the velocity at C, so I'm going to say VF, that's VI, plus A, delta T. Now, if you remember, our final velocity, this would be the one at the ground. Our initial between B and C would be the one at B, right? Uh, what was our velocity there? We said it was 15.39. So this would be 15.39 plus 9.8 times uh, the time that it takes between B and C. 
at 0 0.125 okay so uh, that gives us 15.39 okay plus 9.8 times 0 0.125 and this gives us 16.62 and remember this is meters per second now uh, in this case, I think they said velocity, right? So it should we should specify the direction. So it's that velocity downwards. All right. So that is how the cookie crumbles. Right. So let's go to the next one. Very quickly. So they say to us, sketch the velocity, the position rather versus time graph for the position of the ball from the moment it was released until it strikes the ground, right? They say use the ground as zero reference point, indicate the following on the graph, right? The height of the ball with which, from which the ball was released, okay? Uh, and then say uh, the time when the ball strikes the ground. Now, ladies and gents, you've got a decision to make here. And the decision would be whether for this graph you're going to consider up as positive or down as positive. Now, if I take, uh, in this case, up as, posit uh, as positive, remember up as positive always gives me a logical graph, meaning the graph that I get will actually be a representation of the motion of the ball that as it happened, right? So essentially... I'll have a graph that looks, okay, oops, all right. So I'll have the motion of a ball that looks something like this, okay. So that's what happened on the motion of the ball, right? Now, what was the height of the building, right? You remember, we started from a height of 14.08. That's where the ball started, okay. So that's 14.08. Remember, this is position. Please don't forget to, um, you know, to label your axes. This is time in seconds. Right. So we started at 14.08 and we know at some point we got to 2 meters. Okay. And eventually um, we got to uh, zero, right? We got to the ground. But when we got to the ground, what was the total time? That was 1.7. So please remember to show that total time there, right, which is 1.7. And please remember when you write, when you label your, your axes, you also uh, say in what um, units your time is, okay? Now, if you chose to draw this graph, okay, taking up as, pos I mean, down as positive, right? It would be exactly the same graph. The only difference now is that it just would be a reflection about the x-axis, right? The time axis. So exactly the same graph, only now you would start at minus 14.08, okay? And of course, you are going to end at zero, all right? Um, uh, that's, that would be the shape of the graph that we get. All right, I hope that uh, that has been uh, perfectly understood, ladies and gents. You would have earned yourself 16 marks, all right, just by understanding that, okay? Right, I hope that this has been helpful, all right? And, of course, look out for more uh, as I will be giving you more content when it comes to the preparation of physical science. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.